Hi, I'm Kieran. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe for more. This is the tale of how my life, draped in the illusion of love, unraveled into a web of deceit. Living with my husband, Jake, and his family was like a dream. His mother, Evelyn, always treated me with such kindness, or so I thought. Our home was filled with laughter, family dinners, and endless stories. Evelyn often said, Kieran, you're the daughter I never had. Everything seemed perfect, especially when I found out I was pregnant. I remember running to Evelyn, bursting with joy. Her reaction was ecstatic, yet something in her eyes flickered that I couldn't quite place. My baby's having a baby, she cooed, her embrace just a tad too tight. The days that followed were a whirlwind of preparations. Evelyn took over, planning everything from the baby's room to the diet I should follow. Initially, it felt comforting, having her guide me through this new journey. But soon, her involvement started to feel overwhelming. I don't think spicy food is good for you right now, Evelyn remarked one evening, removing my favorite dish from the table. It's okay, Evelyn. I've had it before during the pregnancy, and my doctor said it's fine. I tried to reason, reaching for the bowl. No, Kieran, I insist. You need to think about the baby, not just your cravings, she insisted her tone laced with an uncharacteristic firmness. Jake noticed these changes, too. One night, as we lay in bed, he whispered, Do you think Mom is acting a bit... overbearing? I thought it was just me feeling that way, I admitted, relieved to know I wasn't alone in my thoughts. As weeks passed, Evelyn's behavior grew more peculiar. She started rearranging my appointments, insisting on accompanying me to every prenatal checkup. I just want to ensure everything's perfect for my grandchild, she would say. Her intrusion escalated one day when I caught her arguing with my doctor outside the clinic. I couldn't hear everything, but her tone was heated, her gestures frantic. When I questioned her about it, she brushed it off. Just discussing some health concerns, dear. You know how doctors are, always so busy and careless. I started feeling trapped, suffocated under her constant watch. My personal space was shrinking and so was my patience. Conversations with Jake became whispers of concern, careful not to fuel Evelyn's growing paranoia. Mom's just protective, Kieran. She's excited about the baby. Jake tried to reassure me, but the doubt had already seeded in my mind. One afternoon, I decided to confront Evelyn. I found her in the baby's room, folding tiny clothes meticulously. Evelyn, can we talk about... everything? Your involvement is getting a bit too much for me. Her reaction was chilling. The warm, loving mother-in-law's mask slipped, revealing a stern, almost calculating woman. Kieran, I'm doing this for the family. You might not understand it now, but you'll thank me later. That night, I lay awake, the unease in my heart growing. The woman I admired, loved, and trusted was slowly morphing into a stranger, her actions painting a picture I was afraid to acknowledge. The illusion of love was cracking revealing a truth I wasn't ready to face. And in that growing chasm of doubt and fear, little did I know, the worst was yet to come. That's where my journey began, under the guise of familial love and care, only to be led into a path I never expected. Happy anniversary, honey. Jake's voice cut through the quiet morning as he brought in breakfast in bed, a simple, loving gesture that warmed my heart. I was four months pregnant, and every little act of kindness meant the world. We chatted about baby names, our plans for the day, the typical morning banter of a happy couple. Little did I know, my world was about to turn upside down. Walking down the street later that day, I remember the chilling sense of being watched. Before I could react, two figures emerged from the shadows, their intentions clear. The attack was brutal, merciless. Their faces were hidden, their words scarce but venomous. This will teach you, one of them hissed as I fell to the ground pain engulfing me. The next thing I knew I was in the hospital, the sterile smell of antiseptics, and the sound of hushed voices enveloping me. The pain was unbearable, but not as much as the news that followed. I had lost my baby. My world crumbled, each word from the doctor a hammer to my soul. Jake and Evelyn rushed in. Jake's face was etched with grief and worry, but it was Evelyn's reaction that struck a different chord. There was a certain coldness in her eyes a lack of genuine empathy. These things happen, dear, she said, her voice too steady. We must be strong and move on.
Recovering at home, the dynamic shifted. Evelyn's mask of concern seemed to slip further. Her words were often laced with an unsettling insensitivity. You need to get over this, Kieran. It's not healthy to dwell on such things, she remarked one evening, her voice void of warmth. Her odd behavior didn't stop there. One day, while she thought I was napping, I overheard her phone conversation. Yes, it's done. She won't be a problem anymore, she whispered sinisterly. A cold shiver ran down my spine. Was she involved in what happened to me? In the days that followed, grief turned to suspicion. I started noticing other peculiarities. Evelyn's secretive phone calls, her sudden trips out of the house, her eyes darting away whenever I brought up the attack. One evening, I decided to confront her. Evelyn, we need to talk about what happened. She looked at me, a hint of annoyance flickering in her eyes. What is there to talk about, Kieran? It was an unfortunate event. Nothing more. But why were you talking about it's done on the phone? Who were you talking to? My voice trembled, a mix of fear and anger. Evelyn's demeanor changed, her voice cold and calculated. You're being paranoid, Kieran. It's the grief talking. But... No more buts, Kieran. Drop this nonsense. Her dismissal was final, leaving a chilling silence in the room. Jake was torn. When I told him about my suspicions, he was skeptical. Mom can be odd, but she wouldn't do something like this. You're reading too much into it. But I couldn't shake the feeling. Every glance, every word from Evelyn, felt like a piece of a sinister puzzle. The once warm home now felt like a prison, with Evelyn as its warden. I knew I needed to find out the truth, but the question remained. How? As the days passed, my heart grew heavier with unanswered questions and unshed tears. But I was determined to uncover the truth behind the mask that Evelyn wore. What I didn't know then was how deep the deception ran. The house that once felt like a sanctuary now seemed like a labyrinth of secrets, with Evelyn at its center, spinning her web of deceit. The more I observed her, the more the inconsistencies piled up. One evening, while sifting through old photo albums, Evelyn's past became my new focus. Oh, this was when I lived in Paris, she casually mentioned, pointing at a black and white photo. But I remembered her telling me a different story years ago. I thought you said you've never been outside the country. Her eyes darted away, her voice suddenly tense. Did I? Maybe just a slip of the mind, dear. That slip of the mind was the first thread I pulled at in her web of lies. The next day, I met with Linda, a longtime neighbor. Over coffee, I cautiously steered the conversation towards Evelyn. Linda's demeanor changed, her eyes clouded with unease. Evelyn, she's not what she seems. There was a scandal years ago, involving her and another family in the neighborhood. Scandal? This was news to me. What kind of scandal? Linda hesitated, her voice dropping to a whisper. It was hushed up pretty quick, but there were rumors. Evelyn was accused of being involved with her friend's husband. It caused quite the stir. That evening, I confronted Evelyn again. I heard something about a scandal from years ago. Care to explain? She scoffed, her voice dripping with disdain. Neighborhood gossip, Kieran. Don't be so naive. But I wasn't convinced. I needed more. Digging deeper, I connected with Marilyn, Evelyn's former friend, who had moved out of town. A video call shed light on the dark corners of Evelyn's past. Evelyn? She's manipulative, always has been. We were close once, but then... Marilyn's voice trailed off, the hurt still evident in her eyes. Then what? I urged her on. She ruined my marriage, seduced my husband, played the victim, and when it was all out, she just... walked away, like nothing happened. The pieces were coming together, forming a picture I dreaded to see. Evelyn wasn't just overbearing. She was manipulative, and possibly even worse. Armed with this knowledge, I decided to dig into the attack. I need to know, Evelyn, who were those men? Why did they do it? Her response was a cold laugh. Paranoid much? You really think I have something to do with it? Every word, every denial from her, fueled my determination. I had to expose her. But how? I needed a plan. A way to trap her in her own web. The following days, I played the part. I pretended to believe her. Acted like the grieving, confused daughter-in-law. All the while, I was watching, waiting for her to slip up, to reveal her true self. As I pieced together the fragments of Evelyn's past and present, I knew the truth was close. 
but uncovering it was only part of the challenge. I had to bring her deceit into the light, to show everyone the monster hiding behind her facade of a caring mother and mother-in-law. The web was unraveling, but the most dangerous part of my journey was just beginning. Exposing Evelyn for who she truly was would be a battle of wits and wills. The plan to expose Evelyn was like walking on a tightrope, but I was ready. I knew her ego was her weakest spot. I needed her to believe she was untouchable, above suspicion. That's when people make mistakes. I started by dropping hints, playing the part of the naive daughter-in-law. I keep thinking about the attack, you know. The police said it seemed personal. I wonder who could hate me so much. Evelyn played along, her voice dripping with false concern. It's a cruel world, dear. You never know who might hold a grudge. As the days passed, I carefully crafted a narrative, suggesting I knew more than I did. It's weird. I found an old earring in the driveway. Looks expensive. I wonder if it belonged to one of the attackers. Watching her face change, a brief flicker of panic, before she masked it with a laugh, was the first sign my plan was working. You're letting your imagination run wild, dear. What would the attackers be doing with jewelry? Each encounter with her was a calculated move in this chess game. I fed her lies laced with truths, watching as she unknowingly built her own gallows. Someone saw a car parked near our house that day. A familiar car. Isn't that strange? Her voice wavered for the first time. People have cars, Kieran. It doesn't mean anything. Then came the final act. I needed to bring her guilt into the open, in front of an audience. The opportunity presented itself during a family gathering. The living room buzzed with relatives, a perfect stage for Evelyn's fall. As the evening wore on, I pulled her aside, my voice just loud enough for others to overhear. I know it was you, Evelyn. I know you were behind the attack. Her facade cracked, anger seeping through her poised exterior. You have no proof, just wild accusations. But I do. I have the earring. I know about your past, how you ruin lives. I know everything. The room fell silent, all eyes on us. Evelyn's mask slipped entirely, her voice rising in fury. You think you can outsmart me? I did what I had to. You were never right for my son. Gasps echoed around the room. She had confessed, her words hanging in the air like a death sentence she had pronounced on herself. In that moment, Evelyn realized what she had done. Her eyes widened with the horror of her own undoing. The family's shocked faces were the mirrors reflecting her true self back to her. I stood there, a mix of relief and sadness washing over me. It was over. Evelyn's reign of manipulation and deceit was finally brought to light. Unmasking Evelyn was just the beginning of the end. Her confession was the key that unlocked the door to a new chapter in my life. The aftermath of Evelyn's public confession rippled through our family and the community like a storm. Her facade of the loving, caring mother-in-law crumbled, leaving behind the truth of her manipulative and deceitful nature. You were right all along, Jake said to me one morning, his voice heavy with regret. I should have seen it, Kieran. I'm so sorry. It's not your fault, I reassured him, though my heart ached. We were all blinded by her lies. In the days that followed, Evelyn's once busy phone remained silent. Her visitors dwindled to none. Her friends, the same people who had been charmed by her for years, now crossed the street to avoid her. The whispers and sidelong glances spoke volumes. Evelyn had become an outcast, a pariah in the very community she once reigned over. One afternoon, I saw her sitting alone in her garden, a stark contrast to the vibrant gathering she used to host. How does it feel, Evelyn, to be on the other side? Her eyes, once so full of cunning, were now hollow. I... I never meant for it to go this far. But her words were just echoes of her past self, empty and devoid of the manipulative tone they once carried. Her fall from grace was not through the law, but by the hands of fate, dealt by the very society she had deceived. Friends and neighbors who had been distant during my time of grief now came forward, offering support and kindness. We're here for you, Kieran. We should have seen the signs. Their words, their acceptance, was a balm to my wounded heart. I found solace in their support, a sense of community that I had lost. As the days turned into weeks, I realized that this ordeal had changed me. I was no longer the naive, trusting woman who had walked into Evelyn's web. I had emerged stronger, more resilient. The tragedy that had broken me was now the forge that had remade me. I'm starting a support group, I told Jake one evening. 
For people who've been through similar situations, I want to use my experience to help others. He smiled, his eyes shining with pride. That's amazing, Kieran. I'm so proud of you. The group was a success, a place where stories like mine found a voice, where healing began. Through helping others, I found my own closure, a way to move forward. As I stood one day, looking out at the group, I realized this was my fate's retribution, not just for me, but for Evelyn too. In her downfall, she had inadvertently given me a new purpose, a new strength. She was a distant memory, a chapter in my life that had ended, leading to a new beginning. Here's to new beginnings, I toasted one evening with my friends and Jake, to strength, resilience, and finding peace in the justice delivered not by law, but by fate. And so, my story ends, not with bitterness or anger, but with hope and a future built on the lessons of the past. Thank you for listening. Remember, out of the shadows of deception and pain, we can find the light of strength and truth. Stay strong. And that's the end of Kieran's story. Now here's a question for you. Do you think Evelyn's punishment, being socially ostracized rather than facing legal consequences, was enough for her actions? Why or why not? Share your thoughts in the comments. Let's get a conversation going. And if you liked the story, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Your support means a lot.